In this interview, we will address a number of financial topics. Information provided in this interview is provided for general information only. It is not intended to provide tax, legal, or investment advice, or to recommend any particular financial instruments, investments, or products. This information should not be used as the basis for making a decision to purchase or sell any investment. Always seek advice from your financial advisor with regard to your investment decisions and your attorney and accountant with regard to legal and tax questions. Hello everyone, I'm John Ramsey, your host for the show, and in this show we're going to talk to the money missionary himself. The author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker, is in the house. Tony, you and I have worked together for a number of years now. It's nice to have you in this format because what I like about this, Tony, is I can get a little bit more in depth about your background. I know for 30 years you have made it your life's ambition to help people like me and the folks out there to worry less about their money. Yeah, you know, John, I was thinking before we went on here, we've had four different um, opportunities to do interviews like this. And then every Monday, uh, of course, at noon on Way 3 Listens Live, we get to take calls from uh, the live call-in show, and that's a, that's a real joy. But this is a little different. I think on this particular station, in this format, uh, when we, uh, I began personal discussions with this station, because they are a Christian-based uh, station, for lack of a better word, uh, it intrigued me to have the opportunity uh, to maybe provide some different information, a little more in-depth information about who I am, you know, what I'm all about. Uh, obviously, maybe some people know me as a financial advisor, but I think they need to know who I am, what I'm all about, where I came from, and even why I give some of the advice I give. And then, obviously, we have a company, Tony Walker Financial, that we work with people, so it might give people an opportunity if they want maybe a different type of advisor than they're used to or don't have an advisor, uh, hopefully this show might help as well. That's why this show is special to me because folks, if you have watched Tony's show that airs on Wave 3, as he mentioned, at noon Monday through Friday, it's called It's Your Money. And we have touched upon, Tony, your, your spiritual side a little bit. With that being said, this is a good opportunity for myself and our viewers to understand really what shaped your philosophies. And when I talk about your background, I'm going to go back even further than you, maybe you anticipated. Um, you know, we know you've been in the business over 30 years. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I want to go back to your childhood a little bit. Maybe some of your father's, your grandfather's philosophies, things that you learned as a child that helped shape you today. Okay. Yeah, and, and this is probably, asking me that question, this is probably going to be more fun than anything. And I hope I don't bore the audience here, but uh, I think it's important. You know, I've, I was born in Lexington, Kentucky, 1960. Um, interesting story because I remember there was a kid, I won't name any names here, a kid moved on our street. I think I was eight years old at the time, and what was odd, in 1968 at that time, I met this kid and uh, went over to his house and saw his mom. Pop wasn't around. What happened? To your, where's your dad? Oh, they're divorced. In 1968, John, you say that real casually or flip it now, I thought that was kind of weird, you know, divorce. Two years later, you know, my mom calls me out of the treehouse. Ironically, the kid and I are hanging out in our treehouse back there in the backyard. Uh, tells him to stay in the treehouse. She's got to talk to me. Guess what she had just announced? My parents were going through a divorce. So in 1970, again, 1970, you know, this was the sure. age that, that was very unusual and it was very difficult for me, you know, to reconcile the fact that I thought I had two parents that were ready to go here. You know, I used to hear him argue some about money, John, uh, but I was too young to put it together. My older brother, I think he sensed something was wrong. I was 10 years old. Heck, I didn't know what was going on. So I think that separation, that divorce, that affected me a little bit. Uh, but I tell you, uh, fast forwarding, I'm going to talk about some more about my past, but fast forwarding, that divorce actually in some ways was a blessing for me. My father ended up moving to Bowling Green, Kentucky. My mother still lives in Lexington. And because of the divorce, see if you can follow me on this, because we're going to talk about why bad things happen to good people and vice versa. But because of him moving to Bowling Green, I ended up going to Bowling Green and moving with him, living in with him as a teenager attended Bowling Green High School, uh, married my high school sweetheart, whom I met in Bowling Green. I have three kids as a result of that, right? They wouldn't be here. I remind them of that. I don't know if they're excited to hear that or not, but, uh, you know, and then I think about, I got in the financial services field because my father-in-law, 1984, offered me a gig there. So, you know, one thing I share with people a lot out here is when you're going through tough times or when things happen that you don't understand and I didn't understand this uh, years ago because I was not a Christian you have to sometimes see where God was working in that entire event and we'll talk later maybe a little bit about economics but see we do that in economics all the time God understands 
the spiritual economic realm so well because everything's done in a whole. It's not done in a vacuum. But what we tend to do in economics, we take these little pieces and we try to figure out all these pieces and why did I lose a job or how come a 401k just dropped 50% or you got to look at everything very holistically sometimes to make sense out of things. So in my own life, I'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, I, 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 let me go back just a little bit because another person that affected me. So that's one, that's one event that affected my life and changed me in terms of how I viewed things, realizing things can change, but although change can sometimes be good. The second event was because of that, I spent a lot of time nearby in Troy, Kentucky with my grandparents. And back then they were always at home. In fact, my Uncle Eddie, uh, who back then Uncle Eddie was 24 still at home. That was unusual too. That's unusual today. But I don't ahead. know, but they're all kind of, <laughs> yeah, somebody says that's the boomerang generation. Yeah. They're coming back home. But uh, anyway, you know, Uncle Eddie used to call this little place where he used to go hang out the land of do as you please <laughs> because we just, it was just so laid back, very worry free. My granddad worked for Bell South. He worked there for 43 years, only job he ever had, retired in 78. And I watched him retire and again, we may talk about this later, receive something that he used to call mailbox money. It was a pension check for all of his years of hard work. We know where those pension checks have gone, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah, and, gone, gone by the wayside. Yeah, they're gone. It's <laughs> extinct with a dinosaur. So, but I watched his lifestyle. I watched how he didn't need a lot of money to, to, to lead a worry-free life. Uh, in a sense, the employer was putting back money so he would have this guaranteed mailbox money, which at the time I didn't understand. We'll get into that later. I do understand that now and the importance of it. So he was a major impact on me. I learned a lot from him. He was a saver, very conservative, faithful to his wife, took care of things, and, you know, eventually he passed away. But as we all will. Then, fast forwarding, as I get into this world, um, I was in a family business at the age of 28. Everything was going great. By, this, by the time, really by the age of 28, I had not had any major setbacks to speak of. You know, no major failures in my life. I really, most people would say, you had a pretty good darn life, you know. And had a problem in our family business, was pretty much told to take off. So, you know, kind of a humiliating experience for your brother-in-law to tell you to hit the road. But that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Strange event there, very devastating. Had a wife, and you know, shortly thereafter, I, I mean, before that, had a child that was just born, and so didn't know what to do. Moved to Lexington, trying to find a job there, didn't work out. Come back to Bowling Green. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a Christian at this time. Come back to Bowling Green in June of 1991. By the way, we were moving into uh, my sister-in-law's old rundown house because that's all I could afford. In fact, I had to go back to my father-in-law to borrow the money to buy the house. Another humiliating experience, but I had to. And I can remember the day before I got ready to move back down there, I broke my ankle playing softball. You know, so it's just, and, and I share all this uh, because, again, another event, just wondering what in the heck's going on, didn't have any money, had been in this business for years. Right. And, and I guess I want to share all this because I think sometimes now people that are familiar with our firm and the work we've done, I've done this now since 1984, might look at me and say, well, you're pretty successful now. You know, you don't understand what it's like to have this or have this set back. And I do. And I understand that. And that's why in this half hour I want to get into some things about my beliefs and about my faith because it was then in 1991 that I truly understood. I was at my ropes in. I mean, I was really at a point my back was against the wall. Uh, spiritually, I'd met some people, but it, it dawned on me that I really needed a Savior. I, d I couldn't do it on my own. And so that was a, June of 1991. I can remember this day. I was by myself in that house. I decided, I said, Lord, you've got to help me out here, man. I, I can't do this anymore. So that was the turning point for me. It was still tough going for years to come. It's gotten much better. But this journey of faith for me has changed my perspective of worry and money now immensely. Now, I'm still learning. Yeah, I still get worried. I still, you know, I'm, I'm human. But I'm saying now what I try to convey to people is I'm going to help you overcome and beat these worries. And especially if this person's a Christian, I'm going to remind you, this is my job while I'm here, I'm going to remind you of the things that Christ did and why worry does not have to be a part of your life, whether you have a little or a lot. You're listening to an interview with the author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker. To schedule a no-obligation appointment with Tony, simply call toll-free 1-877-499-9255 or log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Remember, there's never a fee or obligation to meet with Tony. We now rejoin our interview in progress. You've had some personal setbacks and you've had some personal successes. You've seen the stock market go up, you've seen the stock market go down. But you have a firm belief that God has a hand 
in both sides of your life, both the business side and the personal side. Mm -hmm. And you have let that affect your business. And when I say let that affect your business, let's just say it has a large hand on your business. Is that fair to say? A, a huge hand. Um, and I used to hear people say, well, I give God all the credit, you know, but you really have to. You have to look at these circumstances that are going on in your life. You have to, of course, I study the Word of God a lot, trying to understand what these circumstances are all about. But, you know, I'm reminded Paul is probably who I relate to in the Bible more than anybody because Paul was kind of a know-it-all. He, he thought he had it all figured out. By the way, that's one of the problems. Even in the Christian circles, we have too many know-it-alls right now. A lot of people think they know it all about finance. I don't care what, you know, what Paul, though, understood was, hey, I thought I knew it all. I realized I didn't know it all. Now I have this new life in Christ. And, I'm, and one of the verses in Romans that I really enjoy and this is what's helped me liberate me to think about Scripture and moving forward. He says that happy is a man who does not condemn himself in what he believes. So what Paul was saying about that is, look, you and I, John, we're not going to 100% agree on everything, even spiritual matters or Scripture. Uh, we're not ever going to agree exactly on all the aspects of money and where God may be, it, it, but it doesn't really matter. What Paul realized in his life, true contentment is, I understand why I'm here. I understand why God's got me here, and He's already got a place arranged for me, and I'm at peace with that. That's what He was saying. So whether the stock market's going up or down, now certainly I can help give people pointers, and in future shows I'm going to share people, you know, with how to do that. We're going to get into economics later, but people have to understand whether the market's up or down, those things are out of your control. Whether you have a sickness or an illness. John, I've had, uh, I've had a large clientele. I've had 20 clients die in the last two years. I've had people I meet off the show who have come in who have lost children. You know, it goes on and on and on. So that's not what it's about, though. You know, what Paul would say is you have to be convicted in what you believe, and whatever you believe, based on what Scripture says, you'll be content with that, and you'll have to grow in that. That's what he means by growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, in my opinion. So I'm very comfortable with that, and I'm comfortable taking on tough issues financially because I know in the end that's not really what matters anyway. We're going to do the best we can with what you got, and I'm going to help you try to get there. That's my role. To expand on that, you hear many clergy, many pastors, many preachers who will say it's God's money. You're a man who deals every day, a lot of clients, as you had mentioned, 30 years in the business, 30 years plus, and you're a man who deals with that issue a lot. How do you feel about when people say from, you know, to their congregation, they mm -hmm. say it's God's money? What's your thought on that? That's a touchy subject. Um, I, I think it's interesting that sometimes from the pulpit or people in the religious circles remind you of that and say, I'm a skeptic, unfortunately. I kind of look at it and say, no, wait a minute, you know, why are you telling me that? Is this something you want out of this? And the Pharisees even did that with Jesus. They tried to dupe Jesus and said, you know, who should we give tithes to and all that. And Jesus said, whose inscriptions on that dollar bill or on that coin? They had gold coins in. Caesar's. And he said, well, give Caesar's what Caesar's. See, the, the, the Bible, I believe what the Bible teaches me is God is in control, John, but He loves putting us in charge. So I have this money now, and I believe what God's saying is, no, Tony, yeah, I've given you control over it, I've given you the power of it, but it's yours, buddy. I mean, why would God want the money back? Um, I, I love reading, I read a lot about Watchman Nee, and he talks about that. God gives us the liberty and grants us that liberty, he gives it to us. He gives it by his grace, he gives it through faith, and he gives us the money. And he says, you're now in charge. And there's all kinds of parables. So what I would challenge people on is be careful of what I call this guilt trip gospel that I think is permeating out there sometimes. Be careful just latching on to that, okay, God, it's God's money, so I'll give it back to God. And before you know it, I meet these people. They're basket cases, some of them. They're, they don't know how to enjoy the money. Ecclesiastes, I love this verse, and I'll just read it to you. And we'll put it up on the screen here in just a second. 519 says, As for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth, it acknowledges that God gave it to us, and given him the power to eat of it, to receive his heritage and rejoice in it, it's a gift of God. So think about that. God gives us the privilege of having the money. He puts us in charge of it, and he wants us to enjoy it. And the person that can do that is actually going to be more liberated and enjoy the money and receive the blessing versus the person that's feeling guilty about even having it. So what happens when I'm in the financial trenches? I meet all kinds of people. I meet people who don't want to talk about the spiritual life, which I'm fine with that. You have people that are Christians that want to talk about it. I'm fine with that. But some of them kind of have a warped view of this. They almost have a lot of money sometimes. 
and you can tell they're guilt-ridden over it. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. they think they haven't given enough away or done this or done that. And what I'd say is quit doing and just enjoying. If, if quit trying to figure out what you're going to do with this money. It's just a commodity. There's nothing sacred about it. And I think that's what Jesus was trying to teach us. Don't, don't get worked up. You can't take it with you anyway. I don't need it. So enjoy it, okay? Get, get, give away 90% of it for all I care. It's, but it's up to you. You're in charge of it. So that's actually made me, John, in my spirit, it's kind of made me more generous. It's weird how that works, how the Holy Spirit works. It'll make you the opposite of what you fear is going to happen when you live that kind of life. It's, it's interesting, but that, that's what I found. So I, I worry about people sometimes that when they talk to me, I'm thinking, you know, Christ didn't come to put you in bondage to this money. So be careful. All I would say to people is be careful. Make sure you're reading the Scripture. Spurgeon talks about that. Be sure that you're reading Scripture on your own, not just sitting under the teacher of one man. Because not, not one man has got it figured out, John. That's what I've learned. If you're like myself, you may be watching the television now and you're saying to yourself, hey, this is a little different. <laughs> Tony's philosophy is a little bit different. Uh, it is, uh, I think there's no question, you're heavily influenced by your spiritual side, by personal happenings in your life you've been influenced as well. And some of these are directly related to business. You have seen the economy go up and down, and with that, you have learned that things change. And something also, I remember this, Tony, you had told me that this is something, I, I don't know if it was your father or your grandfather who told you, you said, Things are always changing, right? Mm -hmm. They never stay the same. Help me out with that. Expand on that a little bit. Yeah, my dad, uh, uh, well, I'll just share with you. You know, I've had several clients lately that have come in, and even prospective clients, um, and, and not a large percentage of our population that we work with, but I had deal with a lot of widows. And uh, widows right now are pretty fearful. You know, um, in the stereotypical society we have, especially people in their 60s and 70s, the man kind of went out to work, took care of everything. Um, they, they may be passed away and this widow's left all of a sudden with all these accounts and they go to their broker or whoever or even the bank. You know, the banks, not to, not to dog the banks, but the banks used to be banks. Now you, the bank runs you down the hall to some guy and you don't even know who he is and he's trying to recommend mutual right. funds or stuff my granddad would have never done. So people are nervous. They're scared. They don't know who to trust, you know, and they're having struggles. They're worried about long-term care. Um, one of the things, again, back to Scripture that I remind people of that the, the things do change, that we see change knowing that God is in control because he said things were going to change. Does that make sense? So when we have adversity or when we have change or when we lose spouses, uh, when we feel at our wits end, actually that's confirmation that God said things were going to change. So my dad, my dad was right when he used to say that. So expect the unexpected in planning. No things will change. Do the best you can to prepare. Be good stewards of your money. Work with people, hopefully, that are trying to prepare you for that change, but just know that things are going to change. That's biblical. You're listening to an interview with the author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker. To schedule a no-obligation appointment with Tony, simply call toll-free 1-877-499-9255 or log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Remember, there's never a fee or obligation to meet with Tony. We now rejoin our interview in progress. When we talk about the worry-free retirement, we've talked a little bit about now your spirituality and how that's influenced your philosophy. What other components would you add into the mix if you're talking about a worry-free retirement? For someone who may be watching our show, perhaps they're, they're getting upon retirement age, 55, 60, 65, around in that age, and they're thinking to themselves, what does it mean to be worry-free? What would you say? I think understanding, uh, well, let me turn it around this way, because this is kind of a funny story. Do you remember that uh, movie, City Slickers? Oh, yeah. Okay, Jack Palance. Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Crystal was the guy that was going through the midlife crisis in his 40s. He goes out to the dude ranch, the cattle drive. Mm -hmm. I think he had to pay to go on it or something. That's where all the, all the midlife crisis guys would go. And Jack Palance was the sage cowboy. And there's one point in that movie where they get to know each other, and Billy Crystal's really asking him some deep questions and this and that. And Palance basically says, man, you guys are all messed up, you know. You all come out here thinking you can find the meaning of life. Do you remember this scene? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll repeat it if you don't mind for the no, audience because it's a hilarious scene and it maybe ties what we're <laughs> talking about. So he says, Billy Crystal, I'm paraphrasing, says, well, what is the meaning of life? And Jack Palance holds up one finger. And Billy Crystal says, one. And Jack Palance says, yeah, one. And he says, so what is it? He said, that's for you to figure out. That's the secret of life. The, being content, learning to be content is what Paul said. That's for you to figure out, John. Now, I can try to help along the way. I try to counsel people as best I can. I have to stop sometimes and slow down. 
But everybody has this level of contentment, and they've got to arrive at that at some point. You know, I can't, I can't promise you boatloads of money, you know. Uh, I can only do so much. You know, you, you may have a spouse leave you. You may lose money in the market and all that, but at some point you've got to learn what contentment's all about, and that's where I think the root of faith starts right there. We're talking, to, we're talking about this in a Sunday school class. I teach a group of older men. They're hilarious. About 25 guys are all older than me. With no, no females are allowed in there. It's all a bunch of ma- men. And uh, just a lot of wisdom in that class. But we've talked about that. The difference between joy, which is a permanent type of thing, and happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. It fades around. And, you know, you never can really get a handle on it. It comes and goes. But joy is something that's different. And I think that's what God teaches us through the Holy Spirit, through our assurance in Christ and where we're going. And that way, when we have these circumstances or these things come up that try to rob our contentment, we say, no, I know, I know where my contentment really lies. It's not in that 401K. It's, it's not in that situation going on with my spouse. It's all about him. So I have to remind people that sometimes who claim to be Christians to me and they want my opinions. And I tell them sometimes I'm not a magician here. You know, there's certain things about your finances I may not be able to always help with. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. But I can remind them about the joy they have in the Lord. And, and you always say to me, and I, wanna, I want you to explain it to our audience. I think you articulate this very well. It's not about the money. Can you expand upon that a little bit? Money is not the answer for everything. This is not about the money. And that's what I think Jack Palance was trying to remind Billy Crystal. You think it's about coming out here to a cattle drive and finding yourself. Or you think I can give you the secret of life. That's for you to figure out. And that's the beauty of this journey. Each of us gets to figure that out along with the Lord's help. I've really enjoyed this time with you, Tony, and, and getting to know you a little bit better. Our audience as well. This has been, uh, it's been special for me, I have to admit. Uh, before I move on, I wanted to ask you, what do you think, what kind of person do you actually look for? You know, you mentioned the people you've been influenced by, obviously the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And you mentioned your father, your grandfather. Well, what people do you look for when you're looking for a client? Who do you, who I want people you? that keep it real. You know, my grandfather, I can remember, and, and I hope it's okay to say this. I don't think he would mind me saying this. He used to occasionally have a couple of cold ones, you know. And every once in a while he'd be sitting around talking and he would say, he'd refer to somebody as a, and he was a very straight shooter. He'd refer to him as a long-nosed phony. That's about the worst he ever talked Ooh. about anybody. Now, that was serious <laughs> back then. Although his wife, Hazel, once looked at him. She got mad. And she says, well, Billy, you've got a longer nose than anybody I've ever met. They were hilarious. <laughs> it was like Archie and Edith. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, I used to love sitting there and listening to them, you know. But, uh, you know, long, yeah, I'm, I'm like that. And I think I relate to my grandfather now. You know, I meet people. I watch some of these people on TV or wherever they are, and they're know-it-alls or what. I don't or people I meet sometime. You know, they're going to tell me all about the investment world, and they're wanting to meet with me for advice. You know what? They don't want my advice. And I'm thinking, why are you even here? I'm looking for people who want my advice and need my help. They want me to shoot straight with them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw a bunch of crazy assumptions, or I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'll do the best I can to lay out a plan that I think fits who you are. And I'm wanting to work with people who really want my help, John. Uh, in this business, the most frustrating thing is to work hard for people and you figure out you've got a tire kicker on your hands. You know, they're maybe just wanting to pull an idea. I want to build relationships with people who want somebody they can trust. I've done this almost for three decades. I have a lot of clients, very happy clients, and I can assure you, if people want us to work with them and we're a good fit for one another, you will be happy with our services. You're listening to an interview with the author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker. To schedule a no-obligation appointment with Tony, simply call toll-free 1-877-499-9255 or log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Remember, there's never a fee or obligation to meet with Tony. We now rejoin our interview in progress. Tony, obviously we're in an election year. You can't turn on television without seeing a politician who's running for office and trying to get your attention. And the key words, once again, it's all about hope and change. I don't know about you, but I don't see a lot of hope and I don't see a lot of change. (laughs) I do have hope. I do have hope. I shouldn't have said that. But what are your thoughts on that, Tony? Um, Let me uh, kind of address the whole issue of hope and change. You know, again, since we're talking so much about the Bible here, the men and women in the Bible, when you think about it, have always talked about hope and change. God talked about hope and change. The beauty is if you're a Christian, you already have your hope through faith in Christ Jesus, and you should already consider yourself changed. You know, my favorite verse in Scripture is Galatians 2.20, which says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. 
And again, the gentleman I like to read, Watchman Nee, says the problem is we, we, we accept the fact that we've been changed, but then we keep trying to change our behavior. You can't do it. You have to look at yourself as being exchanged. You're new. You're not the same John Ramsey. You're t you've taken on this person of Christ. He's here to help you. He wants you to move forward in your life. So we're trying to change sometimes. It ain't going to happen, John. There's some behaviors I've got. If I tried to change them on my own, I might change them for a little while. They'd come back to haunt me. No, you're a different person. You're different. So the assurance we have that the Bible speaks about when I hear these messages of anybody, they're all doing it now, hope and change, and every once in a while I get caught up watching all these folks on TV trying to debate back and forth policies. Deep down I know that that's just man. That's the way it's always been. Now with where we're going with the economy, and I'm not real optimistic overall about the economy. I do have some serious concerns. Uh, I don't think we're going to, you know, the things, rapture's coming next week or anything. I don't know about that, but I'm just saying... Here, here's a verse of scripture I'd kind of like to close out this show a little bit with and, and uh, leave you with this, and if you have any thoughts. We're again going back to Ecclesiastes, but here's how God is in control, John. It says, in the day of prosperity, be joyful. There's that word joyful. So prosperity, right now, personally in my life, you know, knock on wood, as my mom used to say, it, it's a prosperous season for me. And he says, be joyful. But then what happens? But in the day of adversity, it doesn't say if adversity comes. It says, but in the day of adversity. So it is coming, John. Sure. Some type of adversity. Consider. <clears throat> See, most people say, oh, prosperous, this is great. Adversity, oh, why me, God? What's happening? No, he says, consider. Surely God has appointed the one as well as the other. So, no, both prosperity and adversity come from God. So you've got to ask yourself, I'm not that smart. You're not that smart. Okay, God, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you allowing? And he answers that. So that man can find out nothing that will come after him. So when I think about that verse, that actually renews my hope again because I say, that's right. The guy on TV, the next president, the next congressman, the next commentator who thinks he's got it figured out, they don't know what's going to happen either, John. You don't know. I don't know. God gives us prosperity. He gives us adversity. Either way, God says... I'm doing this because I'm reminding you, you don't know what's going to happen in this world. I'm reminding you of what's going to happen when you pass. I've already got that part figured out. That's your real hope, right? And you've been exchanged, and you should be able sure. to believe that and accept it. Now, if you can't accept that and believe that, you better go check your faith at the door and make sure. sure you really believe. You see what I'm saying? I do. So do I like adversity? Oh, I hate it. I mean, my, my flesh hates adversity, but when it comes, it's coming for a reason. So I'd encourage, I'd encourage people out there uh, don't gravitate to adversity. Don't look for it. But when adversity comes, slow down a little bit. You know, uh, get with other people who care about you. Uh, pray about it. Think about it. Go to Scripture. But be reminded it's probably there for a reason. And it's a good reason. It's there for your future. It's there to build your faith. A lot of things we can't understand. But lean not on your own understanding, but what Scripture is trying to teach you during those moments. And that includes your finances. It uh -huh. really does. And Tony, we'll get more of that in future shows. I appreciate yeah. you sharing this time with us. I hope you're like myself and you enjoyed a little bit of an inside look at Tony Walker, the money missionary. Tony, before we go, I wanted to tell you thank you so much for sh sharing your stories. You're welcome. Love learning more about the spiritual side of Tony Walker and the family <laughs> stories as well. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. And enjoyed if you sharing enjoyed, them. Yep, you were good at it. I tell you what, if you enjoyed it as well, then we invite you right here on this station, 1.30 every Friday, and you can catch Tony on It's Your Money on Wave 3 every Monday at noon. We'll see you next time. We hope you've enjoyed this interview with the author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker. To register for Tony's next free workshop or to schedule a time for Tony to personally review your situation, just call the number on your screen. Or better yet, log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. We look forward to hearing from you.